This morning on Wake Up With Hope, Jesus 101 will share with us a morning devotional. We will have a dedicated prayer session and a special feature on how to reduce your risk for type 2 diabetes. And we will have joyful music by Alessandro Sorace. Join us. Good morning, friends. Thank you for waking up with hope. We are so excited to be here and waking up with you in this lovely April morning. Yes, we are. <laughs> Spring is well on its way. We hope you have begun to see the lovely glimpses of God's beautiful creation all around you. Send us a message on Facebook with pictures of what spring yes. looks like where you are. We'd love to see your pictures. Yes, we would. You know, on today's program, Jesus 101 will be with us to share a morning devotional. We're gonna have a prayer session that will bless your heart. And then a special feature on how to reduce your risk for type two diabetes. And we're gonna have a joyful music by Alessandra Sorace. But first, this day in history. On this day in history in 1859, naturalist Charles Darwin sent his publishers the first three chapters of On the Origin of Species. The book introduced and expounded on the theory of evolution. Darwin had been secretly developing his theory for 20 years since returning from a voyage to South America. However, when he learned that another scientist expressed similar views as his theory of evolution, Charles Darwin finally published The Origin of Species. The book sold out immediately. You know, friends, without a doubt, the most pressing questions we long to answer as human beings are, where did I come from and why am I here? You know, the beautiful thing is that we really don't have to go far to find the answers. We really don't have to search long and hard to know our origin. God has given us the answers right there in the Bible. What's more, the answers are so clear and simple that there is little room left for doubt. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, God created man in his own image. Later in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You and I were created. We originated from the dust. God took his time to form mankind. Rather than speak us into existence, as he did with the rest of creation, God got down in the dirt and molded us in his own perfect image with his very own hands. Then he gave us his life-giving breath. You know, friends, there's no need to wonder or shroud our origin in mystery. We were created in the perfect image of God. And today he longs for us to know our value in his eyes. We are more, so much more than a mere chance because of a mysterious happening in the universe. Rather, we were purposefully created. You were purposefully created by the master, the king of the universe himself. My friends, do not ever forget that. Amen. This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we have our healthy friends from Loma Linda University Health Center with another one of their wonderful Live It programs. This morning, they are here to teach us how to reduce our risk of type 2 diabetes. Whether it's a Zumba class, kickboxing, or going outside for a jog, aerobic exercise has several health benefits, including reducing the risk of diabetes. Obesity affects one-third of the adult population in the United States and can lead to a host of health problems, including diabetes type 2. Dr. David Hessinger and his colleagues studied a local running club during their six-month-long marathon training program. What they found is in the untrained group of both males and females, there was an increase in a protein called adepidectin. So, there's good news. If you're middle-aged and overweight, you can reduce your risk of diabetes by simply exercising. 
that pretty much agreed with what was already there in the literature. The difference for us was twofold. One, we used middle-aged subjects instead of college age. And two, most of the studies in the literature were done with athletes. What we found is over the course of that six months, there was this progressive increase. What are the tips for today? Incorporate aerobic exercise like running, walking, or biking at least five times a week for 30 minutes. What we eat is important as well. Make a conscious effort to limit rich desserts and fast foods, and go for a more balanced natural diet with fiber. Because fiber is one of those things that if it's plentiful in the diet, we don't absorb as many of the calories, and we certainly don't absorb them as quickly. So you don't get that insulin spike. There were also additional benefits to aerobic exercise. It makes you feel good when you're finished. It feels very good when you stop. It's related to the endorphins that are produced naturally in response to the continued challenge you put on the body. I think walking even is a good exercise. It's aerobic. Almost everybody can do that. There's your tip for the day. On how you can live healthier, longer. We hope you're finding our program worth your while. Don't forget to share us with a friend and visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up for more. We are excited to be gearing up for our special prayer session this morning with the Let's Pray team. It's coming up right after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are blessed today on Wake Up With Hope. It's now time for our prayer time. Our good friends from the Let's Pray team are leading out in prayer this morning. Please join us wherever you are. Hello, Hope Channel family. It is time for another moment of prayer. Um, I hope that when we are finished today that you are encouraged um, and that you know that the Lord answers prayers. Today we're going to be talking about praying about healing, talking to the Lord about it. Um, I'm going to read through some scriptures to help uh, fortify us in the Word of God, and then I'm going to pray for individual healing needs. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another opportunity to come boldly before your throne of grace that we might obtain mercy, Jesus. And I thank you that your mercies are new every single morning, Father. Lord, we're coming to you on behalf of this community, Jesus, praising you for what you're already doing on our behalves and the healing that you have already performed um, and given us as a people, Lord, ultimately in um, reconciling us to you, Father. Um, Jesus, for conquering death and bringing us to you um, in everlasting life, Heavenly Father. But Jesus, we're praying for physical, mental, and emotional healing today on behalf of this community and those that they love. Heavenly Father, it says in James 5.14, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Father, I pray that we would indeed walk in your ways, Jesus, and not forget um, this very um, important principle that you've laid forth in the Word of God. And Jesus in Psalm 146.8, that the Lord gives sight to the blind, and the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. Father, help us, Jesus, to not only have um, physical vision restored in this community, Lord, but spiritual eyes to see, and that, Lord, we would indeed be bowed down in heart and in attitude and in body in your presence, Jesus. Father, and we know that you will lift us up if it is our due time, and Jesus, I pray that you would continue to help us to indeed walk in your righteousness. And thank you for providing that for us, Lord. And Lord, it says in the word of God, worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and on your water. I will take away sickness from among you. So Father, I pray that worship would break out in our hearts and our communities, Father, during this time, that even in the most sour, and hard moments of our lives today, Jesus, and in the world around us, that we would, um, Father, by an act of our will, choose praise, choose worship, Father, and that the heaviness would break off of us in the name of Jesus because of your presence. 
and that Lord, wherever we go, because of your presence, Jesus, the atmosphere around us would change because of you, Father. You come in with us. You go ahead of us, Father. And Micah, um, it says, Jesus, that you're our breaker and that you go ahead of us, Heavenly Father. You're the breaker. You're the one who makes the way, Heavenly Father. And so, Father, we do not fear because you are with us. We will not be dismayed because you are our God. You will strengthen us. You will help us. And you will uphold us with your righteous right hand. We know it to be true because your word says it, Father. And I just pray, Jesus, that that would become a reality for this community today. Jesus, heal our minds, Father. I, I pray for order from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, Jesus, in, in emotions and, and mindset, Heavenly Father, and, and spirit and, and physical, um, Father, our physical bodies, Jesus, that you would bring order and healing in the name of Jesus. And Father, in 3 John, it says that you, um, Heavenly Father, that dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. We praise you for this blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing. Amen and amen. And I do indeed pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you today and tomorrow and the next day, even as your soul is getting along well. Praise God that he's the almighty physician and healer. I pray that this time is a blessing for you and that you will take the Lord with you in whatever part of your day that you're in today. God bless you. Bye. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. You know, there's truly never a wrong time to pray. That's right. And now, are you ready to be blessed in song? This morning, we have the privilege of listening to Alessandra Sorace's song, Redeemed. David says in Psalm 71, 23, my lips shall greatly rejoice because of thee and my soul, which thou hast redeemed. I praise God because we are redeemed. <laughs>
Yes, we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you so much for that song. Now, don't forget to visit us at hope.study to grab your free Bible study guides today. It's almost time to have our devotional thought this morning from Jesus 101. Don't change your channel. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. We are happy that you're still with us. It's now time for a devotional thought. Elizabeth Talbot from Jesus 101 will be bringing it to us this morning. Hello everyone, Elizabeth Talbot here. I'm so excited because today we start a new mini series entitled Fear Not. These are different times in which God says, do not fear. And today we are studying Fear Not Dead Ends. And we will go through the event of the opening of the Red Sea. This is an event that has captured even Hollywood. Remember that old movie, 1956, with Charlton Heston, The Ten Commandments, and those special effects that opened the Red Sea. But what does this event have for our hearts in this moment when we are facing dead ends in our lives? Well, please come with me to Exodus chapter 14. We have left Egypt, have left slavery. We have been delivered by the blood of the lamb. They are on their way to the promised land and then something happens. Chapter 14 of Exodus, start on verse one. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, tell the sons of Israel to turn back and camp before Pihahiroth between Migdal and the sea. You shall come in front of Balsaphon opposite by the sea. So God says, yeah, you're on your way, but turn back. Come back and you're going to camp in a no way out situation. Mountain, mountain, sea, you cannot go forward. These are the dead end situations sometimes we face. And they faced a big one that will be repeated throughout the Bible because they always remembered this event. There was no way out. And God said in chapter 14, verse 4, that this way the Egyptians will know that he is God. There was going to be a purpose for his glory in this dead end. Pharaoh is going to think that they are wandering aimlessly, says on verse 3. And it worked. That's what Pharaoh thought. And he said, what have we done? We have lost cheap labor. We have to go after them. And it says on verse um, 6, he made Pharaoh, he made his chariot ready and took his people with him. And he took 600 select chariots. These are like the SWAT team, right? and all the other chariots of Egypt. He took everyone and officers on the chariots. He was going to go after them to get them back to work for him. And in the meanwhile, these people are camped by the sea. They cannot go back. They don't have a way out. Have you ever felt that way? With no way out in your life? Well, this is where they are in a dead end. And when they see Pharaoh coming with all the army, the 600 choice chariots plus all the other chariots and all the officers, they are terrified. And we read here on verse 10, as Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them and they became very frightened. They became terrified. And they had three questions because sometimes we have questions during those dead ends in our lives and they have three questions and they say how why have you dealt with us in this way bringing us out of Egypt and they have another one is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness and the third one is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt saying leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness oh they say why have you done this why don't you care? We're dying. What's going on? Maybe you and I can, you know, relate to those questions when we meet dead ends. But you see, this is a, this is a human perspective. We get terrified because we're seeing it through human eyes. But God has a different viewpoint. And God's viewpoint starts on verse 13. Moses said to the people, do not fear. Here we have our, our word, fear not, our little sentence. Fear not, do not fear. Stand by or take your stand and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see them again. This is a play of uh, in words of see and not see. The Egyptians whom you have seen, 
seen, you will not see again. And you will see the salvation of the Lord instead. I'm going to change your focus, says God. And then verse 14, a wonderful verse. The Lord will fight for you while you keep silent. They were to take their stand and wait for the Lord to fight for them. You see, sometimes we are part of the battle, even though the battle is always the Lord. Uh, the Lord, because he sometimes uses us as instruments. But every once in a while, we're in dead-end situations, no way out. And in those situations, God says, stand by and watch me. I will fight for you. And this is one of those situations. And then he says, verse 15 to Moses, tell the sons of Israel to go forward. <laughs> forward where exactly? <laughs> there is no forward. And that's because God was going to do something different. Because he makes a way where there is no way. And we are told that he achieved that. Chapter 14, verses 21 and 22. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. And the sons of Israel went through the midst of the sea on dry land, and the waters were like a wall to them on their, hand, on their right hand and on their left. Even the Egyptians acknowledged that the Lord was fighting against them for Israel, right? So you can read that on verse 25. And after the whole thing is done, uh, Israel saw the salvation that God had done for them. You can read this at the end of the chapter. And then they started this amazing celebration. In most Bibles, chapter 15 is called the Song of Moses. But Really, the song is about Yahweh, the Lord, and all that He has done and how He has redeemed His people. There's even a very interesting note at the end of the song on verse 20 that says that Miriam the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took the timbrel in her hand. And that's my question. Who packs a timbrel, right? When you're going to cross the desert, who says, oh yeah, I got to pack a timbrel? Well, somebody that is expecting a, a big achievement from God, something so extraordinary that they have to celebrate. And it says that Mir Miriam took the timbrel in her hand, verse 20, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dancing, and they were singing this amazing victory of God. Well, it's interesting because this song is actually a metaphor of salvation. When we get to the last book of the Bible, chapter 15 of the book of Revelation, we find again in verses 2 to 4, the song of Moses. But this time it says that is also the song of the Lamb because the Lamb is the one that has achieved our deliverance to the promised land. So are you facing an impossibility today? Are you in a no way out situation? You know, God actually specializes in impossibilities of which our salvation cost him the most. It cost him the blood of the Son of God. And he died for us to make a way where there was no way. And he says now, go forward. Go forward. Because there's no dead-end situations for God. And, and the challenge is, why don't you start celebrating now with your timbrel, even before you cross the sea? Because the truth is, that's, that's, that's the assurance that we have, that God is not going to leave us in a dead end. That he will say, go forward. And even if the sea is right in front of you, and it looks like at that end, God says, go forward because I make a way where there is no way. And the fact that this song, the song of Moses in Exodus 15, becomes the song of Moses and the Lamb in Revelation 15 to show that it was a metaphor of our salvation, reminds you that there is nothing that you can face that God cannot handle or make a, a, a new way for. So remember, they're not dead ends for Him. He says, go forward. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And friends, thank you for spending this time with us this morning. And if you'd like to learn more about us and about our program or share with a friend, please visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. That's right. And don't forget to wake up with us tomorrow morning. We will have encouraging music, inspirational life-changing tips, healthy tips on a popular vegetable, and a most encouraging devotional thought by John Bradshaw. You are sure to be blessed, so don't miss it. And if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and would like to learn more about God's amazing purpose for your life, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. Make sure you don't miss that right there is on your screen. That's hope.study and it's to claim your free Bible study guides. 
and check out the website. We have no doubt you're gonna find something there that will be a blessing for you. Now, before we go, we wanna leave you with today's Bible promise. Are you ready? It's found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You know, friends, when we have the meekness that comes from yielding to the will of God, God promises that He will be blessed with the peaceable fruits of righteousness. When we humbly seek God for comfort and peace in the midst of trials and challenges, He promises to surround us with His gentleness and His love. You know, ultimately, as we abide in His meekness, we have the sure assurance that the new earth, the pure and holy earth, will be our dwelling place forever. And I can't wait for that day. Oh, I can't wait. And that is a promise. Yes, it is. We've had a wonderful time on today's program with you, and we hope you have truly felt God's love and care for you this morning. Amen. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, as we continue on with this day, Remind us that this world is not our home. We're here just for a time. There is a day coming where you're gonna usher us into a world made new. And that's what we long for, that's what we live for. In fact, that is the very heart of the blessed hope that burns within our hearts. So keep us faithful today, Lord. May we have the end in mind as we begin this day. In Jesus' name, amen.